Hey everybody, this is Jim Hester. I am a software engineer at our studio. Today I'm going to be talking about Git Bisect, one of my favorite lesser known tools uh, in Git. So Git Bisect is useful when you have a bug introduced in a code base sometime in the past, but you're not exactly sure which commit introduced the bug. What's more, you also know that uh, further in the past, this behavior was working correctly. So you're trying to figure out exactly when this bug was introduced and what changes were made at that time. And it's very useful to find this, this commit because you can see exactly what changes, what, what changed between the commit that introduced the bug and the prior commit and see, um, and this makes it much easier to to come up with a, a fix uh, to fix the bug. So, uh, uh, I'll be demonstrating Git Bisect using a real world example from the Vroom package I'm working on. Vroom is a package to make reading delimited files uh, in R very fast. And um, the issue that was opened was issue 76 that when, when he read the file, uh, the Vroom object was, was not working. And in, in particular, the, the object that Vroom was returning had a different number of records than it should. It had almost twice as many records as it, as it, as it was expected it to have. So the first thing when trying to debug any, any bug um, is to produce a minimal reproducible example. So in this case, the reproducible example I came up with is, is taking the iris data set, um, converting all the values to character, and then writing all the values with quotes. Um, and if we then do this, we can look at the, the result in iris.csv. This is to a CSV file. You can see all the fields have quotes in them. And then if we run this, uh, we get 279 observations. And um, if you know the iris data set, you know that it only has 150 ob observations. So um, clearly Vroom is, is returning the wrong result for this case. Um, so now that we have a, a wrong data set, we can, and we know that sometime in the past there was, uh, this was working properly, that we should figure out what, which commit um, caused the, the issue. So you can, and we do this using git bisect. So you can start git bisect with git bisect start. We'll run this. And then you can see my prompt changed um, that is now showing I'm in a bisect. So that when you're doing a git bisect, really what you need, the main things you need to do is mark certain commits either good or bad. And this is our first commit is on the master. That's the one we just tested. So we can mark, mark that as bad. Now we need to find a commit that's good. So I'm gonna use uh, the git log and there's an argument before that can take a time period. And I know that it was working uh, three weeks ago. So I'm gonna use git log before three weeks, find my commit uh, name, 3348B0, and then check out that commit, 3348B0. Now um, I have to test this commit and verify that it's actually good. So let's run uh, load all again. This will recompile our code. And then once this is recompiled, we can um, run our test code again and verify that this is a good commit. This will take a little while to compile. And I make, uh, cut out some of the compile times in the, in the final video, just to make it a little snappier. We can now test this. 
let's just run it like this. So we all we get 148, which is um, not 150 like we actually want, but um, that's actually caused by a separate bug, that unrelated to the one we're trying to find. So for our purposes, we're going to treat 148 as uh, the correct result. Again, we go back to our terminal and we can now say git bisect good to mark this as a good commit. Now git bisect gives us some um, diagnostic information now. It's saying it's bisecting and there's 35 revisions left to test after this. And that's roughly five steps. So if we were doing this naively, we would have to test 35 revisions. Now we're only testing five, which is uh, quite an improvement. Okay, so, and git bisect also you notice change the commit that we're on. So we're now on this FF3D commit. So we, we just do our same steps again. We, we run load all. And now we check our number of rows and we get a failure. And this failure is actually the failure we're looking for. Um, so this, we should mark this as a bad commit. Hit bisect bad. And again, let's go back here. It, it now is showing that we all, instead of 35 revisions, we only have 17 revisions left to check, roughly four steps. And it again changed our, our location. So we again run uh, load all and then check our result. Again, we get a failure. So we say get bisect bad again. And then run load all, check our result. We get a, the same failure. Now we only have eight revisions left to test. Well, now we only have three revisions left to test. So we can run load all again. Check it. Oh, this one now worked. We get 148, which is what we want. So this is get by we change instead of saying bad for this commit, we say get bisect good. Now it's saying we only have one revision left to test. We can test this. Check our result. This is back to the being a bad result. So we change this to bad. Now we have no revision left after this, so this is our last test. Check it again. This one is good. And now we're done. So uh, git bisect says this revision is the first bad commit. Uh, this is uh, gives us the, the, the full commit message and all the files that were changed. And we can take, we can do git show 38c84 to see what this commit actually changed. Basically what it did was change how the parsing works um, for new lines and quotes, and that has caused this bug. So then I was able to uh, modify this, this I was fi basically fix this, this regression that, that I caused. And once we're done with our bisect, um, well, you can use git bisect log to save it to a file that's sometimes useful if you want to see all the steps that you went through with the bisect <coughs> um, and then to just finish off the bisect you could use git bisect reset to reset your state prior to doing all the bisections so that was showing how to do a git bisection manually you can actually also do it automatically and the way you do that is to create a script um, that can be that git bisect can run multiple times. And the way that it determines if a, git, good, a commit is good or bad is if that's, that script returns a zero error code or a non-zero error code uh, for a bad result. A zero error code for good, non-zero for bad. Um, so we can actually use our R script and modify it to do this. So if we say, if we do our check, so basically we want to check if our number of rows is equal to the iris or again um, it ends up being because of that other bug 
Uh, we end up having to check if it's iris minus two as well. So if, if it's not uh, equal to the number of rows of iris or iris minus two, we want to stop with an error. Otherwise, we just finish. We don't do anything, and that will return uh, a zero error code. So we can save our file and then actually do the bisect. Let's start a new bisect. Yeah, first we want to mark this commit as bad. And then you can actually mark any, since we already know the, the result of our, or the start of our, our last bisect, uh, we can use that SHA directly in, in get bisect good without having to check change there uh, manually. We'll do that. And again, this, this result is showing the same, the bisection result is, is the same. But now, instead of doing that manual iterative process, we can use git bisect run uh, r script, and then our script, which is just called script.r. Then this will repeatedly call our script and automatically mark those commits as good or bad on based on the results of that script. So this will recapitulate exactly the results we did manually. And we'll run this and it'll do all of our loading and running for us. And we're almost done. And we've, we're finished. We get the exact same commit that we got when we did, did this manually. So um, that's just showing how you can use git bisect run to do this um, bisection automatically. I, sometimes it's nice to be able to do it manually just so you can see the results of each of those intermediate runs. But if it's something you know um, what the behavior is going to be in all those cases, it's nice to be able to, to have this git bisect run tool um, in your bag. So sort of to sum up everything, uh, the tool I was talking about was git bisect. It's available um, just on the like git command line. I use it for finding these um, bad commits in, in your commit history, which makes it very easy to see exactly what changes caused the, the regression and uh, devise a way to fix it. Uh, the, the primary commands I use are git bisect start to start the bisection, git bisect bad to mark a given commit as bad, git bisect good to mark a given commit as good, um, git bisect reset to stop a bisection, and go back to the state beforehand. I showed this only when I was done with the bisection, but you can actually do the git bisect reset anytime and it will reset you back um, to before you started the bisection. And then finally, git bisect run, a tool for automating um, this iterative uh, search. So I hope you found this interesting. If you'd like to learn more about git bisect, there's a section in the pro git book that I have linked below. And I'll see you guys next time.